Cleopatra, the charismatic queen who defied history. Cleopatra VII, the last queen of Egypt, was a figure of immense charisma, intelligence, and political acumen. Far more than the legendary beauty often portrayed, Cleopatra was a shrewd and ambitious leader who wielded power with grace and strategic brilliance. Fluent in multiple languages and deeply educated in philosophy, science, and statecraft, she was one of the few Ptolemaic rulers to embrace Egyptian culture and even speak the native tongue. Her magnetic presence and keen insight allowed her to form alliances with some of Rome's most powerful men. Yet it was her ability to navigate the complexities of both Egyptian and Roman politics that truly defined her legacy. Cleopatra was a woman who defied expectations, mastering the art of diplomacy, charm, and, when necessary, ruthless pragmatism, securing her place in history not only as a ruler, but as a symbol of female power and resilience. Cleopatra VII Philopater was born in 69 BCE in Alexandria, Egypt, as the daughter of Ptolemy XII, a ruler from the Ptolemaic dynasty that had ruled Egypt since the days of Alexander the Great. The Ptolemies, though of Macedonian Greek origin, had embraced Egyptian traditions to maintain their control over the region. Cleopatra, as the last active ruler of this dynasty, is one of the most renowned figures in ancient history, not only for her political ambitions and strategic alliances with prominent Roman figures, but also for the mystique that surrounds her character to this day. At a young age, Cleopatra was drawn into the volatile world of Ptolemaic politics. When her father, Ptolemy XII, died in 51 BCE, Cleopatra and her younger brother, Ptolemy XIII, ascended the throne as co-rulers. This practice of joint rule was a tradition within the Ptolemaic family as sibling marriages and co-reigns were intended to keep the family power consolidated. Cleopatra, however, was a skilled leader and wanted to rule Egypt independently. Early in her reign, Cleopatra distanced herself from her brother's regency, and this resulted in political tensions between them, leading to civil war. Cleopatra was forced to flee Egypt and take refuge in Syria, but soon sought a way to regain her throne. Julius Caesar's intervention in the politics of Egypt provided Cleopatra with an opportunity to reclaim power. In 48 BCE, during Caesar's pursuit of his rival Pompey to Alexandria, Cleopatra ingeniously smuggled herself into Caesar's presence, famously concealed in a rug in an effort to make a personal appeal for his support. This bold move worked, and the two formed a personal and political alliance. Caesar, recognizing Cleopatra's potential as an ally, sided with her in the conflict against her brother. After a series of confrontations, Ptolemy XIII drowned in the Nile, and Cleopatra was restored as ruler of Egypt, this time with another younger brother, Ptolemy XIV, as her nominal co-regent. During her time with Caesar, Cleopatra's influence grew. Their romantic relationship became well known, and Cleopatra bore Caesar a son, Ptolemy XV, who came to be known as Caesarian. Cleopatra spent time in Rome between 46 and 44 BCE, where she lived in one of Caesar's estates. Her presence in Rome was controversial as her status as a foreign queen and her relationship with Caesar were seen as a challenge to traditional Roman values. Cleopatra was presented as an exotic and powerful figure, and her arrival caused fascination and scandal alike. Despite her allure, Cleopatra was astute and politically astute, ensuring that she maintained her position and continued to secure the future of her son. The assassination of Julius Caesar in 44 BCE marked a turning point in Cleopatra's life. After Caesar's death, the political landscape in Rome became more unstable, with various factions vying for power. Cleopatra, aware of the delicate situation, returned to Egypt, where she had her younger brother Ptolemy XIV killed and elevated her son Caesarion as co-ruler thus securing her control over Egypt. The political fragmentation in Rome opened new possibilities for alliances, 
and Cleopatra sought to protect Egypt's sovereignty amid growing Roman ambitions to control the region. In the wake of Caesar's death, a power struggle erupted between his supporters, particularly between Mark Antony and Octavian, the future Emperor Augustus. Mark Antony, who was Caesar's ally and a member of the Second Triumvirate, summoned Cleopatra to meet him at Tarsus in 41 BCE. This meeting would change the course of both their lives and the fate of the ancient Mediterranean world. Cleopatra arrived at Tarsus in a grand spectacle, dressed as the goddess Isis, sailing up the Sidnus River in a golden barge. This impressive display captivated Antony, and soon after, the two became lovers. Cleopatra and Mark Antony's relationship was both romantic and strategic. Antony needed Egypt's wealth and military support, while Cleopatra sought to protect her kingdom from Roman encroachment. Together they formed a powerful alliance, and over the years, Cleopatra bore Antony three children, the twins Alexander Helios and Cleopatra Selene, and a son named Ptolemy Philadelphus. Antony, who was dividing his time between his campaigns and his relationship with Cleopatra, began to favor Alexandria as a base of operations, causing tension with Rome. In 34 BCE, following his military campaigns in the eastern Mediterranean, Antony held a lavish ceremony known as the Donations of Alexandria. During this event, he distributed territories to Cleopatra and their children, declaring Caesarion as the King of Kings and Cleopatra as Queen of Kings. These declarations angered many in Rome, especially Octavian, who portrayed Antony as being under Cleopatra's control. Octavian, who was Caesar's adopted son and heir, used Antony's relationship with Cleopatra as a tool in his propaganda war, accusing Antony of betraying Rome and being captivated by an eastern queen. The conflict between Octavian and Antony escalated into outright warfare. In 31 BCE, the two forces met at the Battle of Actium, a decisive naval engagement that would determine the fate of the Roman world. Antony and Cleopatra's forces were outmatched by Octavian's superior navy, and the battle ended in a crushing defeat for the lovers. Antony and Cleopatra fled back to Egypt, their fortunes in ruins. In Alexandria, Antony, realizing that defeat was imminent, took his own life by falling on his sword. Cleopatra, devastated, attempted to negotiate with Octavian, but she soon realized that he intended to parade her in his triumph in Rome. Rather than face humiliation, Cleopatra chose to commit suicide. According to ancient sources, she arranged for a poisonous snake, likely an asp, to be smuggled into her chambers. Cleopatra allowed the snake to bite her, dying in 30 BCE at the age of 39. Her death marked the end of the Ptolemaic dynasty and the beginning of Roman rule over Egypt, which became a province of the Roman Empire. Caesarion, Cleopatra's son by Julius Caesar, was captured and executed by Octavian, ending any claims to the throne. Cleopatra's legacy is one of the most enduring in history. While she is often remembered for her beauty and her romantic entanglements with two of Rome's most powerful men, modern historians have emphasized her intelligence, political savvy, and ambition. Cleopatra was fluent in multiple languages and was one of the few Ptolemaic rulers to learn the Egyptian language. She embraced her role as a goddess queen, identifying herself with the Egyptian goddess Isis, and worked to position herself as a legitimate and powerful ruler in the eyes of her people. Cleopatra's relationships with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony were not simply love affairs but were crucial political alliances that helped her maintain power in an increasingly dangerous world. Her reign was marked by efforts to protect Egypt's independence in the face of Roman expansion, and she skillfully navigated the shifting alliances of the late Roman Republic. Though ultimately unsuccessful in preserving her kingdom from Roman conquest, Cleopatra's actions delayed Egypt's annexation and allowed her to leave an indelible mark on history. In later centuries, Cleopatra became a symbol of both female power and romantic tragedy. Her story has been immortalized in literature, art, and popular culture. 
Shakespeare's play Antony and Cleopatra dramatized her relationship with Antony, painting her as a complex and captivating figure whose love for Antony ultimately led to their downfall. In modern times, Cleopatra has been portrayed in various films, books, and other media, where she is often depicted as a glamorous and seductive queen. However, historical records suggest that Cleopatra's beauty, while noted by some, was secondary to her charisma, intelligence, and leadership abilities. She was a ruler who understood the importance of image and spectacle in politics. The famous accounts of her beauty likely stem from the way she presented herself, both to her own people and to powerful Roman figures like Caesar and Antony. Her ability to command the loyalty of her subjects and the devotion of her Roman allies speaks to her skill as a leader in a male-dominated world. Cleopatra also faced significant challenges as a female ruler. The Ptolemaic dynasty was notorious for internal family struggles, and Cleopatra's ascent to power was marked by conflict and intrigue. Despite this, she proved to be a capable and determined leader, using both diplomacy and military alliances to maintain her position. Her political acumen allowed her to navigate the dangerous waters of Roman politics for many years, even as the Republic descended into chaos. The tragic end of Cleopatra's life, coupled with the fall of her kingdom, has often overshadowed her accomplishments. Yet she remains one of the most studied and admired figures from antiquity, a woman who defied the expectations of her time and left an enduring legacy. Her story raises important questions about the intersection of gender, power, and politics in ancient history, and she continues to be a subject of fascination for scholars and the general public alike. In addition to her political and romantic life, Cleopatra was a patron of the arts and learning. Alexandria, under her rule, remained a center of culture and scholarship, continuing the legacy of the Library of Alexandria, one of the most famous libraries of the ancient world. Cleopatra herself was well-educated, with a strong interest in philosophy, science, and literature. Her court attracted intellectuals and artists from across the Mediterranean, further cementing her reputation as a cultured and enlightened ruler. Cleopatra's enduring fame can be attributed to the complex and multifaceted nature of her legacy. She was a queen who ruled one of the wealthiest and most powerful kingdoms of the ancient world, a lover who captured the hearts of two of Rome's most famous leaders, and a tragic figure whose downfall signaled the end of an era. Her life and reign provide insight into the turbulent politics of the late Roman Republic, the nature of power and leadership in the ancient world, and the challenges faced by female rulers throughout history. Though Cleopatra's kingdom ultimately fell to the might of Rome, her legacy has survived for over two millennia. She remains one of the most iconic figures in history, a symbol of both power and intrigue whose life continues to inspire and captivate people around the world.